Okay, let's start uh, lecture 31. Uh, we will continue chapter 6. So in this lecture, we will see section 6.3, longitudinal shear on beam element of arbitrary shape and the shearing stress of thin ball member as uh, um, by looking at the longitudinal shear. Okay. Now, uh, what does longitudinal shape mean? I mean, for example, if you look at these two box uh, beams that is made up of four planks one two three four and this one also one two three four four planks both of them are made up of four planks but if you look at the configuration of the nails so uh, it can be uh, vertical or horizontal nails depend uh, but in the shear force let's suppose the shear force is acting at the centroid of the section in the same direction for both of them. Let's suppose shear force is acting downward, and we have uh, now which configuration is better? Uh, means which in which configuration we have less amount of shear force acting on these nails. So, uh, so in order to answer that, let's see. Uh, what will be the longitudinal shear? Okay. Mm. Now, again, coming back to the same beam, same uh, simply supported beam, uh, AB with the point load of P, P1, P2, the distributed load, and this is the cross section of the beam. Now, previously we examined the vertical component that was tau xy on the transverse section of the beam. We now wish to, we, in this case, we will see what will be the horizontal component tau x, and that is important for the thin wall structure. Means in previously, uh, we look at what is the this component of the shear stress, mean vertical component tau x y. Now in this section, we will see what is the horizontal component that is tau xz of the shear. Now, uh, let's take a section. Now this time, we're taking an arbitrary section of that prismatic means. So this section we are taking, uh, we are not considering the section uh, that is parallel to the neutral axis, but some arbitrary section. And this is in uh, C, D, C prime, D prime, and if I'm looking from, let's suppose, this uh, this side, uh, so it will be like this. I Means if I'm looking from here, so this section will look like this, and this is some arbitrary section. Now, and the area of, let's suppose, A. Now we take, if you remember that sum of forces in x direction should be equal to zero. So delta h integral uh, sigma d minus sigma a, c in dA, that will be the force in x direction will be equal to zero. And that is force due to uh, bending moment. And these will be force sigma d and sigma c, both are due to bending moment that we did already did previously. So when we put the value, uh, of sigma d and sigma c, we come up with the same equation as we discussed previously. So these two equations are same equation that delta h, that horizontal force, is v q over i and into delta x, and the shear flow is simply v q over i. But the difference is this area and area. So this area for the q for the first moment of area now it will be this arbitrary area and this will give me what is a sh horizontal shear component acting on this on the beam over here so over here and again the direction will be same but the location is now different so it's the same thing as we discussed previously but the integration area integration for first moment of area uh, now it will be different so it's a bit uh, complicated uh, concept 
now let's see now let's see this example that we discussed previously we have a square a square beam box is constructed for a four, from four planks as shown knowing that the spacing between the nail is 1.5 inch and the beam uh, is subjected to vertical shear of magnitude V600 pound. So, if you look at the beam, uh, so this beam, maybe if I draw, is a beam right like this. So, it's made up of four planks, and each plank is uh, joined with the uh, horizontal direction nails. And the distance between each nail is given that is 1.5 inch. Now, we are interested what is the sharing force in each nail. Now, this plank is joined over here. So, obviously, that, that they will try to slip on this location. So we are interested what will be the shear flow over this surface and this surface. And if we know the shear flow, we can find what will be the shear, uh, shear force on each nail. So first we will do, we will determine the shear force per unit length along the each edge of the upper plank. So on the each edge, on these edges, we will find what will be the uh, shear force per unit length based on the spacing between nails determine the shear force in each nail okay so in order to find uh, we have to calculate uh, the first moment of area so on the upper surface of the each plank uh, on the on surface of the upper plank so we have to consider q for this shaded region so q will be simply uh, this is 0 0.753 into 1.875 that um, 4.22 i for the whole cross section so outer uh, square minus inner square so that will give us 27.42 inch form now uh, q that is shear flow v first moment of area divided by i putting the value that is 92.3 pound inch and or the shear flow or edge force per unit length or, or you can say shear flow on each edge will be q divided by 2 because there is uh, because of this area so we are calculating the shear flow on both edges so you can divide by 2 it will give us for the one edge that is 46.15 pound inch and if we multiply with the spacing uh, so that spacing will be equal to o, uh, sorry, this is not 1.75. Uh, so this is as given previously, that is 1.5. So if you multiply 46.15, multiply by 1.5, so that will give me a 69.225. So, so this is 1.5. And this force will be if we were as given in the uh, problem so that become 69.22 pound or we can say 70 pound roughly around 70 pound now this much force on each nail when uh, there's a nail uh, if we join like this, that nail in this horizontal direction of the cross section. Now let's compare it. That uh, so uh, okay. Let me put over here. So this will become 70 pound. Now, if we look at compare with both the configuration, so this one and this one means. Uh, the upper plank dimension is uh, or the nail configuration over here is vertical so now what which configuration will be better so, now for this uh, configuration where we have nail acting 
uh, in vertical direction. So the first moment of area now we have to calculate for this upper plank and we are interested what is the shear force or shear flow on these edges of the upper plank and by finding the shear flow we can find the force on each uh, nail so now in this case the q will be different for q will become for this region highlighted region so q shear flow for this region will be area now 4.5 taking the same dimension 4.5 multiply by uh, this 0 0.75 and the distance is same uh, that is 1.875 now the shear flow will become 6.328 sorry first moment of area q now if you compare that previously for this configuration it is 4.22 now i we already calculated that will be same as the previous one so that was 27.42 inch 4 now shear flow so will be v q over i 600 pound was the force shear force first moment of area we calculated for this one this configuration 28 divided by i 27.42 so this will become shear flow of uh, 140 pound per inch 140.5 five seven pound per inch now if you compare it previously that was 92.3 pound inch now on shear force per unit h on each edge so q divided by 2 so 140.57 divided by 2 so this will give me a 70.28 pound inch and previously it was 46.15 pound now force on each nail so f multiply by spacing so 70.28 multiply by spacing was 1.5 inch and that will become 70.28 multiply by 1.5 that will give me the value of 105.42 pound so force on each nail for this configuration is for this configuration is 105.42 pound and if we have configuration where the nails are horizontal and the planks are like dimensions are like same way like this although the overall dimension is same the shear force was on each nail was 70 pound so now simply changing the configuration you can change reduce the um, uh, force shear force on each nail now uh, uh, what will be the shears now let's uh, expand this concept uh, for the shearing stress and thin wall band. now considering this W beam let's consider this W beam and we are the shear force acting uh, downward direction uh, along y axis now let's take this section so this section A A prime B B prime is shown over here now since this thickness is very small so the delta h along this thickness or along this thickness t will be constant and this constant delta h is acting parallel to this area so that will become shear force tau zx and the complementary shear force if you remember 
we have tau xc now uh, this component tau xc and tau zx uh, we can find from this delta h is equal to v q over i so if we simply divide by area so area will be t times delta x so this dimension is delta x and the thickness t so that become v q over i t so it's the same formula the only the difference is this first moment of area how the first moment of area is integrated and the corresponding thickness as well so previously we found the same expression that was tau xy that is vq over it but again the difference is first moment of area and thickness right and since if you look at for this region if i want to calculate the value of tau xy now the thickness is too large in this case so we can say the value of shear force will be very very small and we can ignore that on the uh, uh, flanges whereas on the web we cannot ignore that because the thickness is very small so the small thickness is put over here so and the, obviously the q will increase also so that's why we cannot put uh, uh that cannot be zero over here but now if we consider tau zx now tau zx again now this case tau zx the thickness is very small uh, on the flange so over here we cannot ignore tau xz component but on the web if you take thickness so this thickness will be from starting from this and it will be thickness something like this if i want to calculate on y-axis so it's a very large thickness so due to large thickness so tau xz in the web will be approximately equal to zero so for thin wall member uh, if the shape was acting downward so on the on these walls We, the value of tau xz will not be zero and we can take tau xy approximately equal to zero whereas on the web so tau xc will be zero and tau y xy will not be equal to zero and it will be significant and the area integration will change accordingly so let's see an ex uh, uh, now, this area integration will, uh, uh, depending on the, sh uh, will give us the idea of shear flow. So, for example, uh, if you have a box beam, for a thin wall box beam, so variation of shear flow will depend only on the vari of variation of first moment of area. Like, uh, if we want to calculate Q, Q is equal to V Q over I. So, in this box beam the shear flow will start from the uh, from this center point uh, now shear and the area integration will be in uh, horizontal direction of the uh, cross section then it will area integration will start from this center point and it will increase and the tau xc will not be zero so we have to calculate tau xc over here but when we come to come to the web side, web portion, so over here the area integration will be now vertical direction, and over here the uh, shear stress tau x y will be prominent because it along y axis shear stress, and this is along z axis, and it will become maximum at neutral axis for this this box beam. Means if you look at the overall shear flow on this section so shear flow will be zero at a and e and obviously the shear stress will also equal to zero at a and e and it will grow and it will become at maximum at neutral axis and then it will be again zero at e so for box beam the q grows smoothly from zero at a and maximum at c and c prime and then decreases back to zero at E. So this 
sense of shear flow in horizontal portion of the section may be deduced from the sense in the vertical portion or sense for the shear V. So when the shear force is acting in this direction, so it will go at A and it will be zero at A and E means it will be zero at the force uh, on the line of the force acting. Okay. And but if the force shear force so let me change the color of my pen so if the shear force is acting along this direction again it is passing through the centroid of the section then shear flow will be started from c and uh, will be it will be zero at c and c prime and then it will start moving like this and then in this case it will be maximum at a and e but again, if the shear force V is acting on the horizontal direction, but if it is acting vertical direction, then it will be zero at A and E. Okay. So depending on the way the shear force is acting, and this is for the uh, box beam or closed beam, uh, closed cross section beam, thin wall. But if you have cross section like this, so in that case, let's suppose the shear force is acting vertical downward. So the shear flow uh, or the shear stress you will be on the web uh, on the uh, sorry flanges will be tau x z component and shear flow uh, will start from here and on the web uh, it, you have component of tau x y and area integration for the shear flow will be like this first moment of India. Now for when uh, for the white flange beam or the sh and the shear flow increases symmetrically from 0 at a and a prime so it will be go 0 a and a prime it will start from here from 0 and then it will become it, they will add at b okay and at b it will be simply q1 plus q2 shear flow from uh, this section a b and plus a prime and b prime so that shear flow will become q1 plus q2 so it can be uh, uh, give uh, we can give the analogy of fluid flow for example there's a inlet from a and a prime so water is coming in so uh, and it is adding the fluid is adding at point b so that we can reduce in the uh, uh, analogy of fluid flow and it will be maximum at neutral axis means and obviously the maximum shear stress for this cross section will be at the neutral axis now let's see an example sample problem uh, so we are interested knowing that the vertical shear uh, uh, is 5 kilopounds mean the vertical force is uh, acting and passing through the centroid of the section and the value is 5 kilopound uh, for this beam of W10 by 68, it's a standard beam. Uh, so we have to find the horizontal shear in the top flange at point A. So we are interested what is the horizontal shear. Means that uh, the shear stress uh, will be in this direction. So we are interested in this component of shear stress. So uh, again, the formula is same T V Q over I T, but the first moment of area will become for the shaded area, and the T will thickness will be this thickness, thickness of the flange that is given over here. So we calculate Q for this shaded area 4.31. Uh, so this dimension is given 4.31 multiplied by. Uh, this dimension the thickness 0 0.577 inch and the distance from the centroid of the section that is 4.815 so q value is this now shear force at a the sorry shear stress is tau v q or i t so v 50 kilo pounds uh, q we calculated so this 3.94 inch 4 uh, power 4 so this is value of i this is from the nhs c of the book 
uh, for this specific cross section. So you can check. And the thickness T is 0 0.577 inch. And the shear force become 2.63 kilopound per square inch. Now, if we were calculating the horizontal component at point A, now the thickness will become very large. So this will become our thickness. So this, uh, we have to consider this whole area and sorry, the thickness will become this whole region. And you can assume that very large value of shear stress. Sorry, it's for thickness will give you very small value of shear stress. And this will, uh, uh, we can ignore that it was approximately equal to zero. Now, some reading assignment uh, for this section. So please check the sample problem 6.4 and 6.5. Uh, it will further clarify the concept. And uh, just uh, go through, check uh, what will be the shear flow for this cross section. Uh, so as we discussed previously, For example, uh, we discussed previously that, uh, let me draw for this one, for this I-beam, uh, the shear flow will start from here. And it will be, and it will add at this point and it will be maximum at the centroid of the section. And for the box beam, as we look at previously, so it will start from this point, from the, this top, where the shear force is passing. So it will start from here, and it will be maximum on the neutral axis or the uh, passing through the uh, this line neutral axis. So what will be the shear flow on this? Uh, T section, uh, this channel section, or this circular section. Uh, now we're changing the configuration of channel section. What from the shear flow? Uh, this Y type section, H type section. Please uh, uh, check and uh, draw it on this uh, picture, and uh, you have to submit it with the assignment of this section. Okay. So it will give you an idea how to, what will be the shear stresses. Also the shear flow will give you an idea what will be the shear stress for these thin wall member. So these are the assignment problems, section 6.3 and 6.4. Uh, the deadline uh, will be the coming Sunday. The uh, so deadline will be Sunday, Sunday night. And the time will be 11.55 p.m. So you have to upload uh, answer of these problems uh, uh, before Sunday, 11.55 p.m. Next lecture, we will solve uh, some problems uh, related to section 6.3 and 6.4. And it will further clarify the concept of horizontal shear and uh, component. Okay, thank you very much.